Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, in a video that we put out a while ago, I showed you guys um, my board game collection. And um, from that video, uh, or during that video, I mentioned that uh, um, there's some of the games that we've played a lot and some of the games that we had sort of come up with uh, our gaming group. We've come up with variant versions of the game. Um, one of the main ones being Axis and Allies. and the other main one being uh, Monopoly. And there was some requests in that video um, for me to tell you guys what the variant versions of those games are. So I thought I'd start off with uh, Monopoly. That's one of the games we're playing right now, or we started playing again a lot more because we're coming out of the summer and a lot of people from my mate, my gaming group, uh, they were away, so it was like a, basically a three, four, well, about a three month hiatus that we hadn't played game and we're starting back up and we're playing Monopoly. And we just had our first game um, last week. And what I ended up doing was writing down the rules in my little notebook. And um, what I've done is sort of uh, written down, uh, you know, taken some of my notes and written them down for you guys that I want to go through with you and I've sort of created a table of um, what the layout of the game is depending on how many people are playing okay so I sort of wanted to you know share this with you because it's uh, it's a brilliant game for me Monopoly uh, I don't know if it's the first board game I ever learned how to play but it's one of the first board games I ever learned how to play and that was when I was like pre-tween <laughs> like i don't know how old i was uh six seven eight years old we were playing monopoly and you know we came in and out of the game we continued to play it during high school times as well right but then there's a period where we didn't play and what happened monopoly came back into my life became sort of a routine a board game that we i constantly went back to with different gaming groups that we had um, it sort of came into play basically in the 1990s. In the 1990s, I was playing a lot of board games. Specifically, I was holding uh, game nights at my place where we were playing a lot of poker. Uh, sometimes we had a couple of tables going and would play craps as well. I have made, you know, I've shown you guys during that video, I showed you guys a little craps board games that I, craps table, mini craps table that I created. And uh, one of the other games we played uh, was Monopoly. And we wanted to sort of have a break from poker because we played a lot of poker, right? And as you can guess, with poker, the games go fairly rapidly. With, with craps, the games go fairly rapidly. And um, we really didn't want to wait uh, until everyone went around the board to be able to buy properties and stuff like that. So what we ended up doing to speed up the Monopoly game was basically deal out the cards, okay? And what we would end up doing is basically shuffling the cards and then dealing on them out, right? And this game became a pretty big routine in our in our game nights. Uh, I don't know if we played it every week because we were basically having poker games uh, where I was holding poker games basically once a week at my place, sometimes more, sometimes less, right? But uh, we were playing Monopoly a fair bit and that sort of became part of my routine uh, with my gaming groups. And, you know, sometimes the gaming groups dissipate and they come back again. And right now, for the last few years, actually, we've had a really nice gaming group within the family. And there's basically about five to six of us avid players and some of the players, some of the people in our main game group, they have other people that want to play as well. So there's a nice mix. There's around, you know, eight to a maximum of 10 people that are coming in and out of the game with about six people being the core group. And we've been playing Monopoly a lot. We were before the summer and we've started back up with Monopoly again. And that's the way we're playing it to speed up the game. So when we're getting together, um, you know, for an evening of board games for either Monopoly or something else. If we're playing Monopoly, if we play for anywhere between three, four, six, seven hours, in about four hour period, we could probably get get in about three Monopoly games. Sometimes we've had up to five, five games of Monopoly in about a four hour period. So it does speed up the game a fair bit. 
Um, and just to give you a heads up, there are a couple of variants um, that you can do with this game as well um, that we did or played in the 1990s um, to speed up the games um, with the group that was uh, coming specifically for poker and crafts and Monopoly would be sort of a side game that we were playing. We wanted to speed it up. So instead of dealing out the cards individually, we would actually deal out sets. And then there's a couple other rules that we changed in the main game where sometimes the games of Monopoly would only last a few minutes. And I'll give you guys those variants. It's just three different variants at the end of going through all of these things, okay? And um, one thing I'll mention, I, I wanted to talk about the history of Monopoly, how Monopoly came to be and what was the main purpose of Monopoly and how it's... Um, sort of evolved to the state that's in but uh, i'll skip over those but basically the quick version is the game of monopoly was wasn't called monopoly at first it was called something else first and the person that came up with the game of monopoly was actually trying to show how our current economic system isn't dysfunctional really when it comes to property rent mortgages and all that jazz right and it's very interesting so if you want to know about the history of monopoly how it came to be uh, i highly recommend reading up on it and you sort of get that feel once you start playing it that for sure this is uh you know there's only in the limit there's only one end to the game of monopoly which is sort of mimicking our current economic system where basically one person takes everything right uh, but as far as a board game goes it's a brilliant game it is an absolutely brilliant game okay so let me tell you um, you know the points that I have here how we go about playing this game right so I'm gonna you know I've created a table and I sort of print off printed off the table here and depending on the number of people playing the float changes okay now for our group we're basically you know we range you know with the people that we're playing we're getting anywhere between three to six people usually four to six people playing six is sort of our maximum we haven't played with seven people or haven't played with seven people for a very long time six is hitting our maximum we're trying to get at least four five and we're willing to play with three people okay so depending on the number of people you have playing this is how much money you give out to people um, we haven't played with two people in this decade or last couple of decades but in the 90s we did um, while we were waiting you know whoever showed up early we play some monopoly while we we're waiting for the rest of the group to show up to play poker to play crafts right so with two people we're handing out seven thousand there's seven thousand dollars float so basically each person gets three thousand five hundred dollars right with three people, we're kicking it up to $7,500 float. So each person gets $2,500. Four people, there's $8,000. So each person gets $2,000. Five people, you got $8,500. So everyone gets uh, $1,700. Six people, we got $9,000. So each person gets $1,500. Seven people, you got $9,100 that we haven't tried out yet. Uh, each person gets $1,300. With eight people, we got $9,200, and each person gets $1,150. Okay. And that's the float that everybody gets cash up front, right? So let's assume right now, I might as well sort of do a little experiment, right? Let's assume right now we're going to play with five people, okay? So with five people, each person's getting $1,700, right? So I'm going to deal out $1,700 to each person it doesn't have to be small bills or anything right now you don't have to deal this out at first so you know we'll put seventeen hundred dollars here and let's assume everybody else has got seventeen hundred dollars and the way we do it usually we don't we don't hand out the cash we sort of have a note that everybody's getting seven hundred seventeen hundred dollars okay what we do now is we deal out the cards okay and what we do, we deal out the cards. Uh, we, in general, we roll the dice and whoever has the highest number gets the first card and then we go clockwise, okay? So basically, let's say everybody's rolled and this person 
you know, there's five people sitting around the table, including myself, right? And every person is going to get a card. And what we do, we usually shuffle the cards like any game that you're going to do, card game. Put it on the table, someone cuts it, okay? So someone, let's say, has cut the cards, and we're going to deal out the cards. So one, two, three, four, five, right? And we go again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Oh, people don't get enough, right? So what we do is we go back, and in the table, what you'll notice is that I've created. Hopefully, this is the final version that I'm going to roll, uh, load up. But basically, the first column is the number of players. The second column is the money, the float at the beginning of the game. The third column is how much money each person gets. The fourth column is a total amount of worth of property on the table, okay? Money-wise, value-wise, uh, monopoly money-wise, of course, right? And the total worth on the table is $5,690, okay? So if that's the, you know, how much value is on the table in terms of property, and if the total float at the beginning, for example, for two people is $7,000, then there's $1,310 free money float around the table that's not tied up in property, right? With three people, there was $7,500 that were credit that we're giving everybody. And if the table is worth, the properties are worth $5,690, then there's $1,810 float money circulating right right now we're doing it with five people with five people we're giving every person seventeen hundred dollars so there's eight thousand five hundred dollars of money value on the table that's what the the game is starting with right and there's still only or there's still five thousand six hundred and ninety dollars in property value that means free money float that's going around that's going to be available you know distributed between everybody is two thousand eight hundred and ten dollars okay that's how much free free floating money is around that's not tied up in properties okay and there's 28 property cards on the table and we dealt out basically with five people every person gets five cards right and that's cards per person if there's five people playing and there's three cards that no one has right now and what happens with these three cards and these are pretty nice cards right what happens with these three cards these cards belong to the bank and you can acquire these cards just like the normal game of Monopoly. Whoever lands there and if the card is still available to be purchased, the person can purchase it, okay? That's the way we're starting the game. Uh, I wanted to really quickly let you know how that works. Now, what we do after dealing out the cards, right? We count up the value. Each person counts up how much money they have, right? So for example, if this is me, these are the properties that I have, right? I got States Avenue, I got New York, I got Atlantic Avenue, I got Shoreline Railroad, and I got Electric Company, right? So each person counts up how much money, you know, what properties they have. They count up the value of the property they have. And you subtract that value of the property from the $1,700 you were getting at the beginning, right? So at the beginning of the game, everybody gets the allowed amount of cards that they have, and then they add up the total value, subtract that from the total money that we're getting at the beginning of the game, right? So let's do this for myself anyway. Let's say I have these, right? And usually what we do is we just add up the mortgage values of the properties multiplied by two, because that gives the total value of the properties, right? So right now shoreline mortgage is worth 100 bucks right plus atlantic avenue is 130 mortgaged 130 oops let's do this again 100 plus 130 plus 
New York Avenue mortgage is 100, 100 plus. States Avenue is 70 plus. And electric company is 75, 75 equals. So that gives me $475 for mortgaged, right? Now I multiply this by two times two. That makes it $950, right? That's how much property value I have if I was buying it straight up, if we were going around, right? And what I do, or what we do, we subtract that from the $1,700 float, mine is 1700. That means I get $750 cash, right? So all we do there is, that's the reason we don't really hand out the initial float, right? seven hundred and fifty dollars so for me starting this game i have seven hundred and fifty dollars cash and i have these five properties okay and everybody else does the same thing everybody you know counts up how much money you know the value of the property they have right and subtract that from seventeen hundred dollars and that's how much uh money they're starting off with and how many what properties they have right and this is luck of the draw right like for example this set whoever is sitting here is sitting pretty sweet okay so what i'm going to do now is sort of um, go through the points that i've laid out here and the odds are we'll probably mention some of the things we're talking that i've already mentioned before we're going to read through some of that stuff again uh, i just wanted to give you guys a quick little lowdown of how this game game is played and we'll get into the little intricacies right now as we're reading these things okay now as far as uh, the game of monopoly is concerned okay uh the objective of the game of monopoly is to basically own everything right you want to conquer the board that's the name of the game for Monopoly. And the main strategy you're gonna use for this game is basically you're gonna wheel and deal and bankrupt as many people as you can. So this is the way we play, right? And we've, I've covered some of the stuff in the initial little intro to this thing. So we shut, uh, so number one, shuffle cards before dealing. Number two, roll the dice to see who gets first card, right? Usually the highest deal cards clockwise one card at a time okay cards must be distributed evenly i.e everyone must have the same number of cards which is what we did everyone had the same number of cards we dealt them out extra cards are held by the bank until someone purchases them purchases them during regular play which is right now we got these three being held by the bank and if anybody lands there first if there's you know if they want to buy them or if they're available to be bought they can buy them right if available for purchase person per, person landing on the property can choose to do so right pay for your properties which is what i did i paid for mine and i have 750 dollars left you may have to mortgage what you have already paid paid for to raise enough funds to pay for your property and this comes into play when you have you know sometimes sometimes when you're dealing at the cards one person gets all the expensive cards right sometimes what we do we vary the amount of money that's in the table the money at the beginning so with the table for column two sometimes we reduce the amount of float on the table how much money we're putting into circulation and if that happens we've had the situation where in the past where someone's getting you know two or three greens two greens and a blue that's a lot of money right maybe you know it's lucky for them to get a monopoly if you get three greens right green colors but that's very expensive if you get three of those things that's 920 dollars right off the bat right and if we decrease the amount of money available to each person sometimes they don't have enough money to pay for the property so what they end up end up having to do is whatever they paid for they can mortgage it and use that money to pay for the rest of the property that they're getting that they're being dealt out okay 
uh, available, pay for your property, mortgage. Point number four, after everything's been dealt out, the money's been dealt out, everybody knows what everybody has with cards and money. You can't hide how much money you have, okay? In Monopoly, in the game we play, you might want to bury it that people can hide the amount of money they have, but money doesn't leave the table as far as we're concerned because if there's money in the pot to be won, real money in the pot to be won or any anything that uh, has a certain weight that people don't want to risk losing, right? You can't have money leaving the table. It's like poker. You can't have money leaving the table because if money is coming out from a pocket, from under something, then they might be a mistake where extra money is appearing in the game, right? And you don't want to take that risk. So to make sure everybody's staying honest, money stays on the table, okay? Uh, and what we do after everything's dealt out, dealt out, you've, you know, got your money back, how much, whatever cash you have left, what we end up doing, we call this the wheel and deal uh, segment, right? This may take a few minutes. Try to get your hands on, a, on sets. Sometimes the deals are one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it's multiple multiplayer deals. Sometimes it's the whole table, okay? And that's point number four. And if we look at this right now, all right? So for example, my cards are these, right? So ideally, the orange, I think everyone agrees, orange is the best set to have, right? And let's see who has what properties. Now, this turned out a little wacko because no one has the possibility. No one's got doubles right now. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that happens. If you look at the rest of the people's cards, sometimes that happens where no one's got doubles or anything. The only possibility of one trade to make a monopoly is just for boardwalk and park place and mediterranean and baltic the ones that only have twos right or you know even the railroads got split up right so basically what we end up doing is we look at each other's cars and try to make deals sometimes the deals happen very fast right someone talks to someone else and says oh i'll give you this for this i'll give you this for this you know they have a trade going just between the both of them and they do the trade and that sort of forces everyone else to compromise and do trades. Sometimes the trades are between three people, sometimes between four, sometimes it's the whole board doing a trade. And we've had that happen. And what we end up doing is we say, you know, we sort of say, okay, someone's gonna get the orange set, someone's gonna get the red set, the yellow, the greens, or whatever it is, right? And as long as everyone agrees on the distribution, of what the sets are then what we sometimes done and what we did in the last game where we had two people make a trade and then there was a four-way deal happening everyone agreed what certain set what the distribution was going to be and what we decided to do was whoever had the highest value properties because everyone starts off with the same amount of money right so money can't come into play but it's properties that matter as a monopoly, right? Money as well, but properties is huge. So whoever had the most uh, valuable set of properties, they decided to take whatever set that was on the table, right? Now, as you can tell, uh, this part of the game uh, can be quite tricky, okay? Some bad blood can, can come into play. Uh, sometimes bad blood carries over from previous games okay so I won't go into how the deals can be made and stuff like this I'll leave that up to you if you just do decide to play this game but it's uh, certain things have more worth than others okay let's just leave it at that after all the deals are done and sometimes there are no deals sometimes you know one person's holding for example this whole person's locking up five different sets five different monopolies right if they don't want to deal the odds of a deal going through between everybody is very low sometimes two people can make a deal and that'll force that person to start making a deal if they don't want to make a deal yet but basically uh 
a deal doesn't have to be made monopolies don't have to be had right some people can decide to lock up the thing and say let's roll to see what happens right maybe they want to see if they can get their hands on one of these right because if someone on the board right now has any doubles of these if they can get the hands if they're lucky enough to land on these things be the first person to land on them and buy them then they have a monopoly they really don't have to make a deal right they can lock up some sets and try to build on whatever they acquired right so after all the dealing is done we roll the dice again the person who ended up getting the first card dealt to them that's not a huge advantage right but that person doesn't get to go first we roll the dice again and usually the highest they get to go first and then we we'll go clockwise and going first in this game is very important okay if you can do it uh, point number six and that's the fifth fifth point i have right roll to see who goes first point number six let me read it to you you must go completely around once go once around the board to be able to build on your properties okay going directly to jail does not count as one rotation any movement due to chance community chest or community chest cars counts as movement around the board so the name of the game is this once you decide who's going first we start rolling when you're moving around the board if you have a set you can't build on that set until you've gone around once and landing on go counts as going around once so if you've landed on go then before the beginning of your next turn you can build and that's the way we we play you can't build in the middle of someone else's turn you can't build at the end of your turn you have to be able you have to build at the beginning of your turn right so if you're going to build houses or hotels hotels or whatever it is any buildings on your property you have to do it at the beginning of your turn so if you've gone around once and landed on go before you roll you're allowed to build okay no one can build until they've gone around once if they're going around and they land in chance and community chest or land in go to jail they go to jail they haven't gone around go they have to start from here again and go around go going to jail on the first round puts you at a huge disadvantage if you get a chance card or community chest that says advance to go or advance to st charles or something else and that gets you going around go once you're at a huge advantage because you can build before anyone else okay keep that in mind that's very very important and one thing we do uh, for our game i don't know if this is in the actual rules but if you end up in your turn if you're rolling if you roll three doubles in a row you go directly to jail right so on the first double you go to where you're going you do what you need to do right if you roll again you get a double you go to where you're going you do what you need to do on the third roll if you get a double you go directly to jail that's speeding right you don't land in the third spot do what you need to do and then go to jail you go directly to jail okay keep that in mind as well so that was point six point seven i know a lot of people don't do this but we do uh, because we're uh, we like to speed up the game to a certain degree we like to get as many games as we can in a night right uh, any so point number seven any taxes or fines collected through chance or community cards and interest paid on unmortgaging property which is 10 percent right so shoreline if it was mortgaged if i mortgaged it if i want to unmortgage it i don't pay just a hundred dollars i pay 110 dollars the hundred dollars goes to the bank and the ten dollars goes in the middle of the board okay and whoever lands in parking gets what what whatever money is in the board okay in the middle of the board so any taxes that are being collected any fines that are being paid any extra mortgage tax interest that you have to pay the bank okay goes in the middle of the board and whoever lands in free parking gets that and then there's nothing in there and it builds up again right point number eight 
When in bankruptcy, you cannot wheel and deal. You must pay your creditor or forfeit everything to the person you owe money to. All property must be mortgaged before the handover. Okay. This is important. Um, and we brought this rule into the game because uh, what was happening was people were, you know, over leveraging, right? They were, you know, rolling the dice, trying their like landing in property that they couldn't pay anything. And then they would auction off a property that somebody wanted and try to get money for that. So what we've done is you can wheel and deal anytime during the game on we'll get to it but you can't hold up the game if it's your turn to roll the dice you can't put the dice down and say i want to make a deal i want to propose a deal your proposals of deals must be done when it's not your turn to roll the dice okay there is pauses between people rolling you know it's, it's a social game you talk but we specifically brought on that rule as well because some people were holding up the game right so as far as the bankruptcy is concerned let's say i've you know let's say i've only got shoreline that's not mortgaged everything else is mortgaged and i have 50 dollars cash right if i land somewhere let's say somebody's got three of the railroads right mm, actually that's not going to work let's say uh someone's got you know build hotels or something and i land somewhere that i have to pay 200 dollars in fines right one property on boardwalk one house on boardwalk is two hundred dollars right so let's say somebody's built one house on boardwalk one house on park place and i land there and it's a two hundred dollar fine right i got 50 bucks cash now i can't make a deal with anyone because i need to make a payment i have fifty dollars cash shoreline i mortgage this is a hundred dollars right so that gives me 150 dollars the payment is two hundred dollars I'm bankrupt I have to hand over everything and if anything's not on mortgage it has to become mortgage you mortgage everything and I pass it on to whoever I owe the money to right even if you have enough money to pay right and you don't want to mortgage anything or if you don't you know you have houses or hotels on your property that you don't want to sell at half price right because if you have houses built or hotels built if you need the money you need to take them down you don't get full value for those you get half value if I want to take houses or hotels down I don't want to do that if I owe someone money I still can't make a deal with anyone okay until I make my debt payment right that means I'm forced to sell my houses and hotels at half price very important rule it keeps things honest okay um, and that's point number which one is it uh taxpayers uh if in bankruptcy occurs money owing that's it that's point number eight right so keep that in mind you should leave yourself unless you're doing you know hail mary right luck of the draw sometimes you need to do that uh you should keep some kind of flow to be able to pay at least the minimum you need to pay without having to go into bankruptcy or sell your houses and hotels at half price okay and there's no by the way there's an in the deal making there's no deal making to allow people to land free on your property okay so for example if i'm going into a danger zone where there's hotels and houses built and i don't have enough you know i want to build some hotels and houses and i don't have enough fun to pay the rent that i might land to land on them i can't go to someone and say hey i'll let you land in my property once for free if you give me three hundred dollars it doesn't work that way okay you can't pre-sell any rental that you might be collecting later okay point number nine if a bankruptcy occurs due to money owing to the bank then the bank acquires all the property if mortgage they will now they will now be unmortgaged and they will be available for purchase during regular play so let's assume you know I landed somewhere the maximum I could do was mortgage everything and 
you know, to the last dollar, I had to give my money to someone else, right? So right now, I would have all these properties mortgaged and I would no cash. Now, before it gets to my turn, I could go, you know what? I don't want to go bankrupt. I could sell my mortgage property to someone. I could make a deal to someone to get some kind of float happening, right? But if no one wants to buy my property, I can't generate any funds. And I go to my next turn having to roll the dice. And even if I pick up, I believe it's Chance that has, you know, the $15 tax, or it might be Community Chance that has the $15 tax you have to pay the bank. And I don't have that $15. I go bankrupt. All the property goes to the bank and it becomes automatically unmortgaged and it's available for people to buy just like regular play okay that's very important as well point number 10 the person that is rolling the dice cannot hold up the game to make a deal players should be trying to make deals before it is their turn to roll the dice right and that goes back to the point that I made that if it's my turn to roll the dice right I can't put the dice down and say okay hold up everyone I want to make a deal right because what happens if my deal is only with one other person? That means if there's five of us playing, there's three people on the table right now that are gonna sit idly by. They don't have any deals to make, so I'm holding up the game, right? Even if there's a deal being made between four, you know, four of us and one person is left out, that person can say, no, roll the dice. You can't make a deal without that person sitting out, right? So there is no making deals when you're holding up the game right if everybody agrees if all five people say okay you can make a deal let's make a deal blah 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 then you can go ahead if one person says no then i have to roll the dice and play my game and then once it's not my turn to roll the dice then i can make a deal right i can propose to make a deal with whoever it was i was trying to make a deal with or more than one person i was trying to make a deal with okay that's pretty important because you you really you know we've had situations where people are desperate so they try to hold up the game a little bit and again this thing can get a little intense um, this version of the game because it is quite rapid and usually one thing we don't do is you know if I roll the dice the other person doesn't automatically pick up the dice and roll right away right not you know not leaving just two seconds between them you should shake the dice a little bit give a little transition from one person to another sometimes we've had a little you know running it on a little time if there's deals being made we put a sort of a time frame on it sometimes we say you know you have to announce that you're going to roll the dice that way everyone takes a look to see what's happening okay so keep that in mind this is it is still a social game so you don't really want to uh, these rules are flexible but one of the ones we've found that really improves the game is if it's my turn to roll the dice I can't put the dice down and say I want to make a deal with this one person or these two people because it leaves a couple of people out of the game it stops the flow of the game right point number 11 no rolling dice if there's payment in progress progress on the board right let's say someone before me rolled the dice they landed somewhere and have to pay someone else right I can't take this and roll the dice right that payment the transactions must be finished because that you know when I roll the dice if I land somewhere maybe I'm landing in the property of one of the people making a deal then they won't notice if that's an important deal they may not notice they might not have enough time to realize that I've landed in the property and they can't collect the rent right so you want to give people ample time to be able to you know play the game properly you don't want to scam anyone we don't want this game to be um, you know uh, get into a shouting match right everything you want to keep social okay point number 12 there has got to be enough time between turns to allow people to react which is what we just talked about this may be based on time five to ten seconds announcements that you someone is rolling the dice few shakes of the dice or whatever it is right you go like this give it a little shake and what happens is what we've been telling everybody is 
you hear this someone's about to roll you hear that someone's rolled take a look on the table no matter what you're doing take a look on the table figure out what the moment is where people have gone right you know really appreciate where someone has gone if they're coming close to your property and it's your turn to roll you may want to build there right if everybody's already passed your property and there's no chance for community cars to get them closer to your property right maybe you want to hold off on rolling because you might be going somewhere to a danger zone right so listen for the sound of dice rolling someone's rolled someone's about to move they may be landing in your property do you want to collect your rent right the game might be changing they may be landing somewhere else where they're going to go bankrupt right they might have landed in free parking and collecting a lot of loot right they may be going to jail they may be getting a chance card and that's going to give them a movement that might take them to your property okay point number 13 once you hear the dice roll it is your responsibility to keep track of what has occurred really keep that in mind some people complain when we've played this game that no one told them you know someone had landed in their property or no one told them that this or that or this or whatever right it's no one's responsibility to keep you updated to what's going on on the game you hear the dice roll look on the table track people right point number 14 this is important okay if you rat someone out you must pay half their rent okay sometimes it happens by accident someone goes oh whose property is that something like this if that happens every round that person is going to have to pay half the rent okay so number 14 if you rat someone else someone out you must pay half their rent i.e it is the responsibility of the owner of a property to request rent for that property not anyone else right because sometimes people want to cause a little damage to another player because by causing a little damage they might be selling houses or hotels somewhere else that the other person might be going into right the danger zone they might be going into right and if you decide to do that they may take a hit but you all you're also taking a hit if you're ratting someone else someone out right point number 15 dice tilts are acceptable as a rule just like craps however if the majority of the players agree that it is too close to call i.e the tilt is too much they must request a reroll. and this basically happens with money on the table in general right so if there's money on the table sometimes the stack gets a little high right if no one's landed in free parking for a while if the dice lands sideways right that's acceptable as long as you know if the money was removed this thing's going to drop to whatever it is sometimes the cards aren't put back properly and the dice lands sideways sometimes it's too much right sometimes it's like this i'm not sure if you can see that but that angle is almost halfway between and if the majority say that has to be a reroll it's a reroll okay the other thing we do is the dice have to land on the board if they land off the board on the table no roll if they're partially off the table no roll the dice have to be completely on the table on the cards is allowed on the money it's allowed on property cards is allowed if someone's left them on the table but off the board is not allowed okay number 16 dice must land on the board to be counted and that's the way we play you don't have to play that way sometimes we've had the board you know the cover of the of the board sitting by the side and everybody rolls in the board right so it's contained um, it works fine but sometimes we've had you know people passing over the um, box the cover for the box and there's you know spillage and things get thrown out and stuff like this so we've decided to keep it the dice has to be on the board okay number 17 rent can be collected in jail okay so that basically means 
if you finished if you've gone around the board once going to jail on the first round puts you at a huge disadvantage but if you've already gone around the board once jail becomes a safe haven okay you can collect rent there and the way we play for jail you still roll your turn if you get a double you're automatically out if you don't get a double you're not out if you want to stay in jail on the third roll you still roll if you get a double you're out and you don't have to pay the fine but if on the third roll you don't get a double you automatically have to come out and it's a fifty dollar fine to come out right and if you're in bank you know you don't have the fifty dollars to get out of jail then you're bankrupt to the bank okay so you still have to pay the fifty dollars to get out of jail if you don't get any doubles and you can leave jail anytime you want if you want to leave on the first round you pay fifty dollars and you roll the dice you're out okay point number 18 and this is the last point uh, for the regular game you can only build as many houses and hotels that the market can absorb okay as many as there are there are 32 houses and there are 12 hotels you can't build more than that more than that cannot be on the table at one point okay if there are no houses or hotels available to be built you cannot build unless you are dismantling buildings on another property you own right so if I want to build on the light blues and I have the purples here right and there isn't enough houses or hotels for me to build here if I want to build houses or hotels then I can sell these ones I do sell them at half price make them available and buy them back again and build them there okay but if all the houses and hotels are used up then I can't build any more houses or hotels if there is all the houses are gone and there's only hotels available then I would have to automatically kick it up to hotel level I can't go halfway right and that sort of burns people that own expensive property okay one efficient and I'll give you one strategy that people do one efficient strategy is to build only houses possibly preventing someone else from building okay so for example if there's 32 houses available and if you have two sets of monopolies let's say you have the purples and the light blues right what you might want to do is not build hotels in these but build four houses in each right if you do that that's five properties five times four that's 20 houses so if you've locked up 20 houses and the rest of the players only have 12 houses to play with right and this only works for a certain period of time because once hotels come into play you probably have to kick it up to hotel mode all right if you can afford it okay and those are the main rules uh, that we have when we play monopoly there's a lot of different things happen sometimes people get angry sometimes people get loud sometimes people give up okay uh, it can get heated um, the last thing I'll point out is there's variants to this that we've played before uh, the first variant is from the table right where we have the number of players the money at start money per person and all that jazz what we've also done is change the amount of money float on the table right if you increase the funds then people can build faster right and that tends to speed up the game if you reduce the fund that sort of slows down the game right right now our happy place with our group with four people we get eight thousand dollars you know to play with and then you have to pay for your property and stuff like this and with five people we've had eighty five hundred with six people we've got nine thousand okay we're doing nine thousand uh, nine thousand dollars so every person gets fifteen hundred dollars but you can vary that decide with your group how you want to play okay the second variant is you know I talked about at the beginning you can deal out sets instead of cards and that really speeds up the game sometimes people decide to trade sets as well right if there isn't too many people around uh, too many people playing the game if there's three people playing a game you know there's one two three four five six seven eight 
nine with the railroads you really don't count waterworks and electric companies as a set but they are right so you can start trading sets if you want so you can deal out sets instead of cards and the way we deal out sets we just take one color from each one and just deal out that and whoever gets whatever color they got they get that set okay the other variant that we've done and we haven't done this I haven't done this for a long time okay uh, the only time we played this variant was when I was holding games in my house poker games craps games and monopoly games right and the reason we did that is we wanted to speed up the game a lot and this speeds up the game a lot and the variant is this you can build at the start okay you don't have to go around once no need to go around one full rotation before building phase and the note I have here is obviously person going first will have a major advantage with this variant sometimes the games last only a few minutes really sometimes the games last only a few minutes right we do everything else that's the same you know deal out them you know figure out how many people are playing how much money is in play we deal out the cars pay for our cards and as you can tell as soon as all the deals are made then we roll the dice again to see who goes first that part became becomes seriously important in this variant where whoever goes gets to go first you can build right off the bat and just imagine if you had the light blues the purples or the oranges right if you could build first huge advantage huge advantage and we did this uh we did this for a fair bit uh back in the day okay so keep that in mind okay it uh the game can change the game varies a lot every game is very unique i've played multiple games we've played multiple games of monopoly in this way and it hasn't got boring yet and it's been for me it's been you know 30 years 25 plus years of doing this more than that almost 30 years of doing this and still enjoy it very very much it's a fantastic game okay and it speeds it up you can get more monopoly games more games in per night with the group that you're playing okay and that's um, you know one variant of one of the board games uh, that we do uh, there are other you know for different board games there are other variants specifically for axes and allies that's the one we play a lot um, the variant game that we play uh, we have tried some of the other board games as well but none of them stuck uh, it's basically axes and allies and monopoly that we've sort of I don't want to say graduated but we've kicked it up to a level that we're just playing variants now uh, our variants and sometimes we switch up the rules and it's a lot of fun and if you do end up playing this game uh, like this I hope you enjoy uh, and if you enjoy it a lot please uh, leave a comment if you have any additional rules uh, to what I've laid out right now that you think might improve the game might give it a little bit more spice uh, please leave a comment and uh, we'll try it out with our group as well and see how it goes okay um, that's about it uh, I hope you enjoy and um, I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now